holy name give him glory give him honor for bringing you to a new month in the new year give him glory give him honor bless his holy name worship the king of kings the lord of lords the ancient of days bless his holy name thank you father thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. I want you to lift your voice to him and pray this prayer with all your heart and say, Father, let this month be my month of breakthroughs. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Father, let this month be my month of mighty breakthroughs, mighty breakthroughs in every sphere of my life. Let this month be my month of mighty breakthroughs. Breakthroughs spiritual, breakthroughs financial, breakthroughs physical, breakthrough emotional, breakthrough marital, all round, all pervading, mighty, miraculous, earth shaking earth-moving breakthroughs. Let this month, Lord, be my month of mighty, mighty, mighty breakthroughs. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my redeemer you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my redeemer you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised my Almighty God, King of glory, Lord strong and mighty, Lord mighty in battle, the only one who can arrest the arresters, 
Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for seeing us through January. Thank you for bringing us into a new month. Thank you that in January we didn't have bad news. Thank you that in January you were there for us. Thank you because we know you'll be for us again in February. Thank you because you are the author and finisher of our faith. Because you have started January well with us, we know the rest of the year will be well. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Almighty God, this morning, we, your children, are here again. I cry to you that this month will be our month of mighty breakthroughs. In every facet of our lives, let it be a month of mighty breakthroughs. Glorify your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. Shake hands with two or three people and tell them God will bless you tremendously this month. And then you may please be seated. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Reading from verse 1 to 7. Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. This morning, one of the arresters we want to arrest is poverty. In the story here, we see that poverty can arrest your destiny. This woman had two sons. Husband was dead. And because she was poor, because she was in debt, creditors have come, giving her 24 hours before they will come and arrest her future, her two sons. Arrest them, sell them into slavery, so that she will never see them again. And that would have been the the end of the lineage in that house. 
But the Almighty God stepped in and arrested the arresters. In the name that's above every other name, poverty will be arrested in your life today. But we'll just take a few lessons to learn from this woman. Lesson number one, she reported the arresters to God. She ran to the man of God and said, Help me. They want to arrest my future because I'm poor. She ran to the only one who could offer her help. Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2, Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. God can be your ally. And there's nothing wrong when you are facing a battle you can't win on your own to turn to your ally for help. Psalm 46 verse 1, Psalm 46 verse 1 says our God is the ever-present help in trouble. And those who have learned the secret of divine partnership, being in partnership with God, have discovered that if you can just be in partnership with him, you are guaranteed huge success. In 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 11, 2 Samuel 6 verse 11, the Bible says that Obededom was in partnership with God. The Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Obededom for three months only. Obededom opened his house for what today we will call a house fellowship. Within three months, God prospered him so much that the whole nation heard about it. I'm believing God for someone here today. Long before you die, the whole nation will hear about your prosperity. She cried to her ally, the Almighty God, the ever present help in trouble. Number two, she obeyed her commander in chief. When the man of God was giving instructions, she knew the instructions are coming from God through his servant. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2 made it clear. The Almighty God said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all that he commands you. Then he says, part of the blessings he will give you is that the blessings will be so much that you will be running away. And the blessing will be pursuing you and will be overtaking you. It's there in the Bible. God says, if you will obey me completely, I will bless you to such an extent that you will say, God, this is becoming too much. May that be your testimony this month. She obeyed. In other words, she didn't just hear. She did what she was asked to do. James chapter 1, verses 22 and 25 James 1, 22 and 25, says, Don't be just a hearer only, but a doer of the word. Romans 2, verse 13. Romans 2, verse 13, says, It is not the hearer. Romans 2, 
Romans 2.13 says, It's not the hearer, but the doer of the word that shall be justified before God. Don't just hear the word. Be a doer of the word. Number three. She released what she had to get what she wanted. Man of God said, what do you have in the house? She said, just a pot of oil. And the man of God said, release it. And see what will follow. She released what she had in order to get what she wanted. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16, the widow of Zarephath released her last meal. And she got enough meal to last her and her son throughout the famine. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, Solomon released what he had. Not only did he get what he wanted, he got much, much more. The widow of Zarephath released a meal, and she got a meal that lasted not just one day, not just one year, not even two years, but for the rest of the famine. Solomon released a thousand bond offerings, got wisdom that he said he wanted, and the Bible says he got much more money that silver became like ordinary stone in his days. When you have little and you hold on to it, the little will begin to diminish until there's nothing left. When you have little and you release it to the Almighty God, He has His miraculous way of turning it to something much more than you even bargained for. Now, I will remind you of two stories quickly because it's very crucial. But this month is going to be very special in the life of somebody. I'm just reminding you, some of you have heard the stories before. Some of you might be hearing them for the first time. We were building the very first auditorium. We've got to roofing stage. I told the area pastors then, and there were 12 of them. That's how big we were then. I told each area to build a dormitory for the people from their area coming to the convention. I wanted to roof the auditorium. I said I would make that my own assignment. Big auditorium, 100 meters by 50 meters. It was the biggest thing we ever saw there. To roof it then, I needed 17,000 Naira. Naira was strong then. It shall be strong again. Whether IMF likes it or not, Naira shall be strong again. I'm telling you, Naira was strong then. My Toyota crown cost me 5,000 Naira. 5,250 Naira. Fully loaded. Toyota Crown. That day will come again. In the name that's above every other name, it shall come again. And so I needed 17,000 Naira only to roof the auditorium. And then one of my sons, one of the area pastors, came to me. He needed 1,000 naira to roof his own dormitory. All I had with me was 1,000 naira. He came to me and said, please, daddy, give me 1,000 naira. I want to roof my dormitory. 
I was upset. Number one, who told him I had 1,000 naira? Number two, I had one, I still need 16 more. And this boy wants to take the only one I had with me. I said, if you don't get out of my office. He had never seen me talk like that before, so he turned and ran. But as he was running away, God spoke to me and said, give him the 1,000. If I didn't know God's voice, I would have said, get thee behind me, Satan. But I knew he was, he was the one talking. So I called the boy back, gave him the 1,000, and he went away galloping in joy. And I was grumbling, it's not your fault. I'm back to zero, <laughs> your problem is solved. And God spoke to me and said, son, why are you grumbling? There were two problems. Now there's only one. We have used you to solve his own problem. Only one problem remained. The Almighty God will solve all your problems this month. And then, all of a sudden, that very day before the night fell, somebody came all the way from Portacot. She said she had just collected her house rent. And the Almighty God said, don't stay. Go right now to come and give the money to my son. I checked the money. It was 17,000 naira. I gave what I had. I got what I wanted. Everything you want from God, you will get it this month. I tell you another story. This time one young man came to me and said, Daddy, I want to give you a house. I said, I don't need a house. He said, I want to give you a house in Abekuta. I'm not coming to live in Abekuta. I'm going to live in the camp. I don't need your house. Go and be living in your house. He said, No, I have two. I want to give you one. I said, I don't need a house. He said, but I must give you this one. I said, okay, listen. I know pastors who don't have a house. I already have one. I'm going to live in the camp. I'm not going anywhere. I will tell you who to give the house to, who will pray for you for the rest of his life. He said, no, it's you I want to give it to. I thought maybe something is wrong with him. So I said, okay, go and pray about it. He came back. I said, go and pray. Go and pray for I can't remember now. Whether three months or six months. Anyway, by the time he came back, I said, I told you. He said, I brought the papers. I brought the keys. And God said to me, take it from him. I took it from him. And he left, rejoicing. It wasn't long after that that he came to me and said, Daddy, I want you to follow me somewhere. I said, oh, payday. Nothing goes for nothing. <laughs> no free lunch. And so I followed him. And he was taking me far, 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 far into what I, I consider uncharted territories in Lagos. Finally, we arrived where we were going. And it's a whole estate. He said, Daddy, that's what I wanted. That's why I gave you my house. <laughs> I said, you are a clever boy. <laughs> gave, me, gave me a little house, you got an estate. I pray for somebody here today. Your testimony will surprise people. Number four. She harvested the good relationship that she had with her neighbors. She had good relationship with the neighbors. That's what she harvested that day. Because if somebody came to you and said, please, I need your vessel, empty vessel. 
If you are not friendly, number one, you won't give, give her the vessel. Number two, you will ask, what do you need the vessel for? Who are you? What do you want to use my vessel for? But because she had been on friendly terms with all her neighbors, everyone she asked for, an empty vessel gave freely. She had plenty of empty vessels because of her friendly relationship with her neighbors. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 10. Proverbs 27 verse 10 says, Go not into thy brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is afar off. When you are in need, God said, don't go to your brother's house. Many of them don't even want to help you anyway. Many of them are only too happy to see you get into trouble. He said instead, go into your neighbor's house, the neighbor that is near. That is the fellow who will help you. So what is the Bible trying to teach us from this? Get all your neighbors saved. So that when your day of need comes, you will be able to tap into them as brothers and sisters. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 10 says, Two are better than one. He said, Woe unto him that is alone the day he falls. He said, Two are better than one because if one falls, the other would lift him up. If all your neighbors are your brothers and sisters in the Lord, when you need help, they'll be more than willing to help you. Even if all they can do for you is to pray for you, that will be enough. Because the word of God says, if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. There will be occasions when you won't be able to reach your pastor, but you can reach your neighbor, the fellow next door, particularly if you have won them to Christ and we are all coming to the same church, it becomes easy to pray together in the time of need. That's one of the purposes of the house fellowship. When the crisis was intense in the northeast of Nigeria, when they were bombing churches, killing people, etc., etc., et our house fellowship there was booming. Because if you can't go to church, you can at least meet in house fellowship. People can come together in the house and pray together against forces of darkness. You can pray together that God will arrest the arresters for you. But you have to get them born again first. Number five. After God blessed her, after the breakthrough came, she came back to the man of God and testified. Ah, your God has done it. Do you know the problem with many of us is that we don't testify. We get only one miracle and because we won't talk about it, we won't testify about it, God says that one is enough. Psalm 89 verse 1, Psalm 89 verse 1, David said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. He said, with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will not keep quiet of what God has done for me. I will learn to be grateful. I will be a witness. God answers prayers. And then some of us don't even know how to say thank you, Lord. We don't need to come back and we don't know how to come back to say thank you. I remember a couple of years ago, 
One lady came to me and said, Daddy, I want you to pray for me because uh, the president then, not the one who just left, the president then, was about to begin his second term. Please, uh, number one, help me talk to him to appoint me again as a minister and pray for me that it will happen. I said, is that so? She said, yes. I said, uh, I remember some four years ago you came. You asked me to pray for you that they will appoint you. I prayed. He said, yes, yes, that's why I'm back. You prayed four years. Your, your, your prayer is like fire. As soon as you prayed, I was appointed. Pray again. I said, in all these four years, this is the first time I'm seeing you. You want me to pray again? And he said, yes. I said, ah, well, <laughs> my prayer is not that cheap. I'm a humble man of God. I will do the will of God. But my God expects you to at least come back to him and say, thank you, Lord. He said, you have to pray now so that I can say thank you double. <laughs> Clever girl. David said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will tell all generations, God has been good unto me. Do you know the reason why many of us are still in debt? Because we don't know how to say thank you for what we consider small blessings. Small blessings. I was touched this morning in our house uh, money devotion. We have finished uh, the devotion and one of the ladies said, Daddy, I have a testimony. What's the testimony? He said, somebody I've not seen for a long time came to see me. She came in peace and returned in peace. Help me thank God. How many of you thank God that you even came to the camp safely and you returned home safely? How many of you have thanked God this morning that you woke up, your eyes can see, see, your ears can see hear, your mouth can see talk. How many of us thank God that our hands can still clap? How many of us thank God that our legs can still dance? Stand on your feet. Let me hear you shout a really big hallelujah to God. If you are here this morning and you, you want the almighty God to arrest poverty for you, the first thing to do is to surrender what you have in order to get what you want. And the first thing he wants you to surrender is your life. He wants you to surrender your life to him so he can save your soul, so you can become one of his children, and then he can take it over from there. In the meantime, so if you want to come, you want to give your life to Jesus, you hurry up. I'm not going to waste time waiting for you. The rest of us, let's just thank God. Let's thank him for what he has done. He has been good to us. He has been wonderful to us. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you better come and come and surrender your life to him. Come and ask him to take over your life from this moment onward to take over your presence so that he can take care of your future. Come, he's calling you now. It's only if you surrender your life to him that he can become your ally. It's only if you surrender your life to him that you can begin to call on him and he will be answering. Those of us in front, let's call on God. Please save my soul. I've come to surrender my life to you. Everything I am, everything I can ever be, I surrender to you, Lord. Save my soul. Forgive all my sins. 
and I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will serve you for the rest of my life. Have mercy on me, Lord. Save my soul. Save my soul. Thank you, Father. Yes, you've been so good to us, so wonderful, so kind, keeping us alive, keeping us healthy, keeping us strong, that we can even have our mouth to say thank you. We thank you for that also. We bless your holy name. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, we thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for protection. Thank you for security. Thank you for peace in our land. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this, your children who have come forward. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. They have come to you. Please receive them. Write their names in the book of life. Please don't let them backslide. Keep them close to yourself forever. And Lord God Almighty, all of us who are here today in one accord, we're saying thank you one more time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Those of you who have voices, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Now, those of you in front, I want to rejoice with you because by the grace of God from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, I'm going to need your address, and I'm going to need your prayer request. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Clap if your hands are still moving. Clap if your hands are still moving. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. You may please be seated. Something happened last, I think it was last week. that further touched my heart to keep on saying thank you to Jesus. A family friend of ours had cancer of the voice box. The voice box is that which causes you to speak. 
is from the voice box that the voice is coming. It's the amplifier in your throat. And so to save her life, the doctors removed the voice box. You know what that means? That she will never speak again. So she could only communicate using text messages. But then, God in his own miraculous way restored her voice. So when I, I, I was just returning from a journey and she had come to see my wife and the people around didn't know what was causing her to thank God the way she was thanking God, she just kept on saying, I can talk again, I can talk again, I can talk again, I can talk again, thank you Jesus, I can talk again. You know, we don't know the value of what we have until we lose it. Those of you who still have a voice, let me hear you shout hallelujah to God. Thank God. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I can stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I, 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 what we're going to give this God this morning should be a special offering. It has been so good to you. So good. I pray that you will not lose what he has given you. So take an offering worthy of the Almighty and then lift it to the Almighty God and say, Father, with this offering, I arrest poverty. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Father, with this offering, I arrest poverty permanently in my life. No more poverty. I arrest the arrester. I arrest poverty, Lord, with this special offering. I arrest poverty. I arrest poverty. Oh Lord, I arrest poverty forever in my life. Never to be poor again. I arrest poverty. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Okay, because he loves a cheerful giver, let's give him very cheerfully. Let's dance to the basket. That our legs can still move. Let's, let's use it to dance for God as the band will begin to sing.
Now, before I bless the offering, there are some people who wrote saying they want uh, to be prayed for, and they asked to come to the uh, divine counter. If you come forward now, we will pray for you. If you come to the altar, we will talk to God for you. The rest of us, this is the first day of February. Whatever you want God to do for you this month, you can go ahead and talk to God. And those of you who are coming forward, also tell God what it is that we want him to do for you. And I'll pray with you. You have two minutes to talk to God, so tell him exactly what you want from him. Thank you, Father. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, you are the all-sufficient God. You are big enough to meet all our needs. So I'm thanking you in advance because I know this morning you meet the needs of your children. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. I commit all of them who have come forward to the altar into your hands. Whatever it is that they want you to do for them, do it right now. Do it today. Do it before they get home. Do it before the sun sets. And everyone who had come to the divine encounter this morning, let them have an encounter with you. Once again, Lord God Almighty, let this month be our month of breakthroughs. Surprise every one of us. Let it be well with all of us. Bless the offering of your children. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. Arrest poverty in all our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. God, the biggest miracle this morning. Let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah. Hallelujah.